Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, ahead of Ondo state governorship elections, violence breaks out in Owa town. One person reported killed. PDP and APC point accusing fingers at each other. People's Democratic Party says it has no confidence in INEC's ability to conduct a free and fair poll in Ondo state. And President Muhammad Buhari vows to resist any form of betting in the 2017 budget, insists rogue projects and figures injected into 2016 documents will not happen again. And Somalia's parliamentary elections allegedly marred by widespread corruption. Candidates reportedly offer hefty bribes to secure votes. On business news tonight, Trade Union Congress appeals to operators of financial institutions to shun corrupt practices and save the economy. And on sports news tonight, Mercedes driver Lewis Hamilton sets fastest time in practice session for the crucial season-ending race in Abu Dhabi. I'm Gloria Umezuke and from Abuja, Canadian High Commission asked the federal government to take decisive action against child marriage in Nigeria. We we'll begin tonight from Undo State, where in a matter of hours, the people will make a huge move to determine who becomes the number one citizen of the state. The race is seen as one that may go down as perhaps the most intense in history. But as the voters are anticipating, the gladiators too are finalizing the strategies to ensure victory. Security has come under intense scrutiny there as police authorities confirm the death of one person in Awa. Our political correspondent, Joe Kimbaloi, updates us ahead of tomorrow's exercise. Akure, the capital of Undo State, calm and everyone going about their businesses just as normal. It is the eve of the Undo governorship election. Schools are shut. Some major public institutions have their gates locked. It is because the state government declared a work-free day for people of the state to prepare for Saturday, the election day. The peace in some parts of the state may be intact, but in our war, in the north senatorial district of the state, the tenderness of the peace may have been punctured. In the evening of Thursday, a clash is said to have ensued between two political parties and their supporters, which have left sadness, sorrow and bloodletting after violence erupted. And the police say they're still looking into the matter. We are on ground and uh, we have deployed all our men and that type of thing will not happen. Security may be a major concern and considering the level of deployment seen so far in the state and the police IG statements, one will hope all goes well on Saturday and even after that day. Citizens try to hurry to do last minute business, banking activities and long queues at the ATM machines are clear indications. Voters don't appear disturbed by the incidents. Voting for some of them is very important. I just advise people that there's not even bother what happens. And maybe we don't exist to come out and vote. Some politicians have their fears, though, as to the delivery of free, fair, and credible poll. Some are even anxious about who the returning officer for the election will be. But INET believes it should be trusted on that matter. The returning officer for this election has been appointed by the chairman of the commission, and his name is still kept secret until tomorrow. What about the materials? The materials are also living today. They will be there by this evening. So before 5 o'clock, they should be there. They led for the local government. Local government headquarters is on land, not uh, outside the water. The like, has about uh, nine wards or areas across the land, so that is over the water. While they say, do has 10 uh, areas, 10 on land, 10 across the water. So all of them are living today for the areas. 8 a.m. Saturday morning, the poll will open. 28 political parties are up in the contest, with about a million and a half voters likely to elect their next governor by their thumbprints on the ballot. As they do that, their eyes too will be on the result in what may be one of the most keenly contested races ever in the history of Undo State. Shion Okimbaloye reporting for Channels Television News. 
But while one of the major players in the elections, that's the People's Democratic Party, is casting a vote of no confidence on the electoral empire, the party spokesman Dayo Adeyei told journalists in Abuja today that the party lost its confidence in the electoral body after it sub substituted the name of Mr. Itayo Jegede before it was reinstated by the appeal court on Wednesday. He also says that the electoral body should have postponed the elections to compensate the party's candidate for the time lost while the court cases lasted. We are appealing to INEC. To me, as far as I'm concerned, under the dispensation, INEC is no longer independent. His name should not be called Pachia P. Neck. Pachia Neck. Pachia, Pachia National Electoral Commission. It's no longer independent. Because it seems to me that there is a cabal dictating to them everything they must do. The, the, the National Commission that have been deployed to those days, we have no confidence in them. They are the same people that went to, to Edo and read the elections. They read the elections in Edo State. So we don't have confidence in them going to Edo State. The other issue is Edo elections. We called on INEC several years for them to postpone the elections because they are part of the problem that we are facing. If they had not substituted Jekede's name illegally, <coughs> illegally, we will not have had all these problems. And I said they substituted his name illegally because number one, you monitor the primary, you, his name was submitted to you, you accepted it, and you published his name as the candidate of the PDP. Then suddenly a court order came, and you had two court orders, so the one you will obey. And you know INEC has a panel of consultants who work for them, legal consultants, made up of senior advocates of Nigeria. They normally refer these matters to them, and they give them advice. And to the best of my knowledge, that panel gave them advice to retain the get there. President Muhammad Buhari has promised that the distortions that happened to budget 2016 in which series of rogue projects and figures were injected into the financial document will not happen in next year's budget. The president who is speaking while receiving in, audien in audience members of the governance support group, the GSG, led by Honorable Jukwemeka Wajuba at the State House said that I am waiting for the 2017 budget to be brought to us in council. Any signs of padding anywhere, I will remove it. President Muhammad Buhari reiterated that he had been in governance since 1975. Variously as governor, oil minister, head of states and chairman of the Petroleum Trust Fund and has never heard of the word padding until the 2016 budget. He promised that such would never happen again under his watch. The president also spoke on the violence that attended some rerun elections in the country saying, quote, I agonize over the elections in Kogi, Bayelsa and River State. We should have passed the stage in which people are beheaded and killed because of who occupies certain offices. If we can't guarantee decent elections, then we have no business being around. Edo state elections was good, and I expect Ondo state elections to be better. Well, for more on the Ondo state elections now, let's join our political correspondent, Sheo Okimbaloye, who has been covering the elections leading up to tomorrow when we're expecting the elections proper to come through. Sheo, what more do you have? Hello and welcome to Akure, the capital of Ondo state. And we are now being joined on the news at 10 by the coordinator and convener of the election situation room, Mr. Clement Owankwo. Thank you so much for joining us on the news at 10. Thank you, Sean. Are you concerned with the news of the death of one person in Owa, uh, in the northern senatorial district of Ondo State, just two days before this election? Yes, we're very concerned. We're, we're concerned about the violence. We're concerned about the rhetoric of the politicians again. Uh, and I think it's really sad that um, an election that should otherwise be peaceful has witnessed uh, the level of tension and violence that uh, has occurred, especially the killing in Owo. And again, it goes to the question that the politicians need to be very careful that um, the search for power should not involve the taking of human life. And this is really sad for, for all of us. If you look at uh, the manner in which the security agencies have conducted themselves prior to the day that this violence erupted in our Thursday evening, 
one will wonder what went wrong considering the number of deployments the police said they will have on the ground. Well, again, we, we look at the figures uh, now and again, what the police say they have deployed on ground and um, what is actually deployed. And it's difficult to verify the actual numbers at the end of the day. Uh, but it still is a responsibility on politicians uh, to conduct themselves in a way that does not provoke the kind of violence and uh, deaths that we see uh, with elections. This country should not see people die because of elections. Uh, the chief security officer of the land has said that he's not very sure about the security situation. Uh, and although he's a politician, he's asked for the postponement because of his political leaning. Do you think that uh, INEC should consider this at all? No, we do not want to see a postponement of the elections. A lot of preparations have gone in. Uh, the Independent National Electric Commission has uh, prepared, deployed, and we see a lot of preparation on the INEC's part. Uh, civil society is here fully deployed and observing. The security agencies have deployed and are prepared to work as they have indicated. The Electoral Act does not support any call for uh, postponement of these elections. Indeed, the Electoral Act uh, states in section 45, uh, subsection 3, that the absence of polling agents uh, um, in elections does not necessarily invalidate the elections. But INEC has confirmed to us in the meetings we had today that they have accredited every agent for every political party. So we have no reason to see justification uh, in the call for postponement of those elections. As an election observer, do you have your fears about those who will be returning these election results? No, we would like to operate on the basis that the elections are going to be free and fair. Of course, we will keep an eye on INEC to see that INEC does what it should do under the law. Uh, we will be concerned if INEC violates its own guidelines and we will make the call should INEC do so. Uh, we know that the returning officers are normally kept secret uh, until they actually appear on ground. And um, from all indications that we have from INEC, INEC has indicated that it intends to find independent, unbiased uh, returning officers for these elections at all levels. And we will be uh, following up with INEC on that. Before I allow you to go, tell us what you make of this exercise and this contest, considering the caliber of uh, some of the candidates, the major candidates in this election, and what do you think that it portends for Nigeria politics at large? Well, we, we had actually thought from the beginning that this election would be uneventful, so to say, but again, the shenanigans of politicians in their own parties, the internal crisis generated across virtually all the parties. Some have managed theirs better than others, but uh, the internal crisis within the parties have created the level of anxiety that we see. Uh, what is, of course, positive about this is that you really can say outright that this would be the outcome of the elections. I think that's beautiful for democracy. I think the people of uh, Ondo State need to go out, freely make their choice, and hopefully whoever the people have chosen will be declared winner. On a final note, you think this election will be free and fair? We expect it will be free and fair. We expect that INEC would do what it should do under the law, and we will be watching our next performance. We will also be watching the security agencies to be sure that they do not weigh in support of any candidate and where they do so, uh, we will uh, make that point that they have acted outside of their legitimate and constitutional responsibilities. Clement Nwanko, the convener of Election Situation Room. Many thanks for talking to us on the News at 10. Thank you, Shil. And that's it from Akura, the capital of Ondo State. And it's back to you, Gimba, in Lagos. Kimbaloi talking to us from uh, Kuredi on the state capital. In part two, after the break, EFCC arraigns former works minister and pro chancellor of Federal University of Agriculture, Abekuta Adishaye Ogunlewe, for alleged financial misappropriation. Please join us again.